love and your mercy that covers and prevails over us we're deeply grateful we're deeply grateful thank you for the gift of life and good health thank you for what you're doing in our lives how you are behind every cause supporting us we're grateful oh god in jesus name we pray all the ladies can see that i want to pray for the men today is father's day i want to pray for the men so all the men please stand up please be standing and if your wife is next to you you can you know either stretch her head towards you or just hold your hands in agreement as we pray thank you lord thank you lord I want to pray for the men first of all happy father's day to all the men yeah happy father's day to you happy father's day to you glory to god so we're going to pray for all the men today oh thank you jesus father we thank you lord thank you for all this men thank you for their journey from birth up to today thank you for how you have guided how you built how you have made how they have made progress you have been the one responsible to the giver of life to the giver of all things father we come and say thank you father i'm praying for all of the men that they will have a deeper relationship with god that they will have that they'll be filled with the knowledge of your will that they will be filled with the knowledge of your will in the name of the lord jesus christ lord i'm praying for this man in the name of the lord jesus christ your children will not be orphaned i pray that in the name of the lord jesus christ long life will be your inheritance oh in the name of the lord jesus christ your wife will not be widowed in the name of the lord jesus christ you will not beg to sustain your family i bless you today with the gift of health i bless you today with the gift of long life in the name of the lord jesus christ you will be a priest over your family you will be a worthy example to your children in the name of the lord jesus christ i bless you today i say nothing will go wrong with your life you will not reduce you will not diminish you will not tarnish you will not deteriorate in the name of jesus there's a prayer i want to pray for you from a, from the book of psalms you know we prayed about it in next level this week psalm psalm 16 verse 5 psalm 16 verse 5 and i want to pray for all the men this is a lot about to do with your work psalm 16 verse 5 the bible says the lord is a portion of my inheritance and of my cup he says thou maintains my lot let me explain what the lot is the lot means my space whatever is going on with me going on with me so you can think of it as a packing lot you know but lot here can mean your transaction your business whatever is whatever is yours he now says this he says the lord maintains my lot you know why that's powerful the reason why that is powerful is this oh this is this is this is so energizing if man maintains your lot they can mismanage it they can lose it but when the lord is the one that is maintaining your transaction nothing can go wrong because the lord is the one maintaining your lot i pray for all the men here either you have projects either you are in transition either you are having things to work on things outside your control that the lord will maintain your lot in the name of the lord jesus christ the force of reduction will not work in your life where you have passed you will not go back there the lord will maintain your work it will maintain your lot in your business in your transactions in your project the lord will maintain your lot you will not reduce you will not diminish your finance will not reduce it will not diminish in the name of the lord jesus christ it will be grace it will be grace upon grace for you all of you that are doing well you will only do better those that are not doing well you begin to do well from today in the name of jesus christ in your office your lot is maintained in your industry your lot is maintained can i declare over you everybody that is useful to you and helpful to you they will not be turned against you in the name of the lord jesus christ everywhere you step it will be favor and grace it will be favor and grace it will be favor and grace in the name of jesus thank you father in jesus mighty name say with me say the lord maintains my lord please you can have your seat amen you can have your seat that's a very powerful prayer you can you need to let me fix the sound again it's you know that's a very powerful prayer that the lord would maintain my lot you know it's a very powerful confession maybe you have a transaction going on 
you have things going on in the office and some things are within your control, something out of the control, just always declare, the Lord maintains my Lord. The Lord, like, it's going to turn out well because it's the Lord. I'm not working on this alone. It's the Lord that what maintains my Lord. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's turn our Bible. So this morning, we're talking about Christian consecration. And this morning, our focus of our teaching is love the Lord and not love the world. Love the Lord and not the world. Love the Lord and not the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Timothy chapter 2 in verse 20. Do you have all those bags again? Yeah. Get all those bags together for me. Second Timothy chapter 2 and give to Pastor Tola to bring them. You know, Second Timothy chapter 2 in verse 20. The Bible says this, and this is very instructive. The Bible says, but in a great house, they are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and of earth. So it now says that, and some unto honor, and some unto dishonor. It says in a great house, there are different kind of vessels. It said, and some vessels are unto honor, and there are some vessels unto what? Dishonor. So he didn't say they are unto dishonor because they are wood. He says there are some golden vessels that are unto dishonor. There are some wooden vessels that are unto honor. So what makes them unto honor and dishonor? I want to read the next verse, verse 21. Verse 21. And if any if a man therefore purge himself from these things, a man, I just have like the Holy Spirit just said, said something to me. All the men listen to this. When you get home today, just take a moment and pray and say, Lord, show me area of adjustment. Show me where I need to make adjustments. You know, sometimes a man is very difficult to correct. So it takes the Holy Spirit to actually show you and be like, okay, that thing that your wife is saying, that thing that your girlfriend is saying, that thing that your business partner is saying, that thing is very true. You know, yeah. The Bible says that um, how can a man cleanse his ways except the Lord shows it to him? So show me the areas of what? Personal adjustment. All right, back to the scripture. So he says this. Therefore shall a man therefore purge himself from this. It says, therefore shall a man purge himself. Did you notice this? It says, the man himself now has to purge himself from this. And he shall be a vessel unto honor. So guess what? That either you become a vessel of honor or not, it's your choice. Because it's when you purge yourself that you now become what? A vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use. And prepared for what? Every good work. So it's not about you being gold, you being silver, you being this. It's the fact that you have to purge yourself. Let's read the amplified version of this. Amplified version of this. Someone say hallelujah. That's simply so good. So good. So good. He says, whosoever cleanses himself from that which is ignoble and unclean. He says, it's something you have to do. You are the one that has to cleanse yourself. God is not going to do it for you. He says, whosoever cleanses himself from that which is ignoble and unclean, and who separates himself from that, from contact, which contaminating and corrupting influences. Oh, wow. Corrupting influences. There are some numbers you need to delete. Corrupting influences. There are some pages you need to block corrupting influences there are some people you've known that are corrupting your faith he says whosoever separates himself from contact with contaminating and corrupting influences will then himself be a vessel set apart useful and honorable and noble for noble purposes consecrated and profitable for god's use so this is what consecration looks like yeah so this is a christian man this is a christian man and you know in his life, he has all these things that uh, you know he's struggling with. One part is unforgiveness, another part is pornography, another part is lying. He has all of these things. When you come before the Lord, the Bible says you should purge yourself. Purge yourself means I'm going to take and say, you know what? The, you know, there's this indiscipline. I'm a gluten. I, I, you know, I'm going to lay it at the altar and say, Lord, I put this on the altar. But that's not all. Because in your Christian work, some things can be okay at a level. As you grow spiritually, you have to lay down some more. You know, some of you, is a fact that you prioritize pleasure over the things of God. He says, you have to, someone says, God, 
purge me. No. He says, if a man will purge himself, it's what you have to do for yourself. So, you know, here you are, you know, there's a way you, there's a way you sexualize women and you think of women. Every time you see women, it's the bomb bomb you're looking at. He, you know, every time you see women, like, oh, ooh, ah, yeah, yeah. You know, and you gather with your group of guys and over beer, you guys are going to say, ah, that girl, if I smack her three times, ah, and you say, well, I don't get to do it or I just keep talking about it. Those talks are called filthy conversation. He says you have to purge. He says you have to purge yourself. You have to purge yourself. You know, you have to purge yourself. You have to purge yourself. He says if you want to be consecrated, you have to purge yourself. There are things in your life you have to take away. You have to correct the language. Every time you see something, hey, you know, you use the F word, you use the swear word. You're not a child of God. Your tongue has been sanctified. Some things should not be used again. You can't be using the F word and the swear words. No way. He says you have to purge yourself. So we keep purging ourselves. We keep purging ourselves. He says, and if you cleanse yourself or purge yourself, you increase your usefulness to God. The question is this. With all of the weight he has, it, cannot, it can't be useful to God. So he must come to the altar, the place where God is, and dump all it there. And dump all of it there. And you know, sometimes it's an instruction. And sometimes when God is trying to correct you, and God is saying, come, give, me, give me that weight. And you say, I'm not giving you. I'm going to say, give me that weight. And God says, okay, you have it and some of you are here there are things you're struggling with god about maybe it's a relationship you're not meant to be with maybe it's a lifestyle adjustment you're meant to change and god is fighting you and it's time to say lord the truth is that i can't fight you lord you have the best in mind for me i'm going to take this thing and just put it at the altar and this morning is about going to the altar it's about going to the altar because as I'm teaching, the Holy Spirit begin to tell you areas you have to make adjustment, areas you have to make adjustment. And, and this, this, this is the Isaac you don't want to let go of, and you've let go of every other thing. God can touch, God can, in fact, God can touch your finances, God can touch this. But Lord, please, whatever you do, don't touch this. This is this is very personal to me. This is how I am. This is how I've been built. This is what I enjoy. This is my safe place. And you know what? Is that thing you hold back that God touches the most? You know why? Because God is the kind of God is that I'm either God of all or God of none. Did you get that? I'm either God of what? All or God of what? None. And you must take, so you come and put it on the altar. And it's, it's going to make you cry. There are things that God has told me to do that made me cry. But that's what it means to follow the Lord. Sometimes following the Lord is not easy. It's not an easy thing. Consecration is not easy. But the reason why you can consecrate yourself is that number one, you understand there's nothing that God asks me to do that is not for my good. He loves me. God is not selfish. He loves me. I may not understand it, but God has my good at heart. Eventually, I get to see what God is saying. So I take that and put it on the altar. And you know what happens to people? They put it on the altar and after two months they go back and pick it from the altar and god says no lay it on the altar let it be there and, and someone says well yeah in january there are some things i put on the altar but you are picked up right now and god is saying go back and leave it on the altar someone say hallelujah someone say hallelujah someone say hallelujah yeah, so what does consecration do for us? Number one, like we said before, consecration amplifies your usefulness to God. It says if a man will sanctify himself, he will become a vessel unto honor. And let me say something to you quick, just a background. I know that in church, even our church will let you know that God wants to bless you, God wants to do that in your life. And that is the truth. But that cannot be the whole of Christianity. As much as God wants to bless you, you were made for God. You are not trying to use God. And your whole life cannot be what God is trying to do for you. You must ask yourself, how am I living for God? A lot, of, a lot of Christians want to use God for their purpose. When they need visa, they remember God. When they want an appointment, they remember God. They always need God for a purpose. But listen to me. God, you were created for His purpose. One of the funny things I hear is that God, I, if you don't give me a husband, I will stop serving you. Ha. 
when you go on strike, just remember, heaven does not negotiate with terrorists. Because, you know, like, you, know, you need to think of who God is and what you tell him. Your, your perspective should be like, Lord, in the rain and in the sun, in the word of Job, he says, though he slays me, he says, yet will I praise him. My only one truth your your consecration should be lord it's you or nothing oh my god there's a song there's a song i wish i can remember it oh wow it's not a popular song it's like a chanty song you know um uh, it's like lord you are my own i have no plan b does anybody remember the what sing if you if you know the song yeah Yes, Lord, I have no other option, no plan B. No. Did you hear that? Lord, I have no other option. It's like, Lord, consecration is that if you don't help me, I'm sunk. Because I'm not going anywhere. I'm not because... I'm not going to be like, because I now want a husband, I'll be doing red soap. No. I'm not going to do like, because I want to get married now, I'm looking for a fast track. No. If I want a child, I will not go to someone to buff me naked. No. Lord, there's no plan B. Sing it again. Sing it again. Lord, I have no other option. No plan B. You're, You're everything. everything Sing it just two more times. You're all I have. No other option. There's no plan B. Lord, you're everything to me. I, I, I don't know if this sings it deep inside you. It's a Lord, you're all I have. No other option. No plan B. You're everything to me. And you know what I notice? The people that have that kind of mentality, God always come through for them. Oh yes, God always come through for them. God always come through for them. Because God is looking for the person that says, I'm not serving you for thing, I'm serving you for you. God always come true for them. You know, I, I mean, I, I can say this now. When, when I was going to get married to my wife, you know, I just told my wife, I just said that, you know, I'm called to be a pastor. And, you know, I'm not sure if I would, if, if I would ever be allowed to, like, do business or make all, all those kind of things. I, you know, and I said, today, I'm pastoring in Lagos. If the Holy Spirit says tomorrow, get up and move into Jebo Day in the village. I said, that's what I would do. Because... My calling is not attached to a place, it's attached to God. And I said, if you want to get married to that kind of person, you have to think about it. I said, you have to think about it. Because I don't live unto myself. You know, can, I, can we speak? You guys are turning pastors to celebrities. Pastors are not celebrities, they are servants of God. This thing that the pastor will come, they will snap you from the car. As he's coming out from the car, he will, he, will, he, will, he will stay in private jet and he's walking and there are 24 ushers. Hey, 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 hey. See, that is not, that is not the qualification where a pastor is. You know, he's a powerful man of God. You can't know a powerful man of God from how many protocols he has. The powerful man of God is the person that is in the will of God. Because sometimes we get it confused. You, you, you get it confused. You think, oh my God. If you see the pastor trying to say, gee, what God? He comes with a Rolls Royce. It's, see, all of those are man's standard. God's standard is not like that. The pastor is a man of God. He's not a celebrity. And you guys have the, you guys, if you're not careful, you put the pressure on the pastor. Come like a celebrity figure. We're going to worship and talk about them. 
And now pastors need to come in expensive suits and designer this and designer that. <laughs> Can we just calm down? It's just about seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added to us. And I remember, I remember that conversation and you know, I remember when my sister was living in a certain country and she had the right to file papers for me. And she said she wanted the file papers for me to come. You know, I said, I just want to have the papers, even if you don't use it. I said, my sister, don't, I will not even allow you to file any paper for me. I, I never even told my wife this. And the reason why was that I never wanted to have an opportunity to be tempted. Because I, as a servant of God, where I live is his will, not my will. You don't understand, I belong to him. I belong to him. And that's consecration. When you get to that place, they say, Lord, I belong to you. One time my wife asked me, and she said this, I'm not sure if she remembers it. Um, will you consider relocating to the US? I said, never. If I'm doing this, all this Jaguar movement, someone says, what's your perspective about Jaguar? I said, I will tell you what I think. I said, number one, when hardship hit Jerusalem, the Christians scattered across the world, but the apostles remained in Jerusalem. I say, where are the apostles who remain in Jerusalem? I say, others can scatter. I say, the apostles remain in Jerusalem. And I'm telling you because I've seen pastors that relocate and they relocate their ministry. And I'm like, you mean things were so tough and you relocated your ministry? Because that's not a human choice. You want to date a guy, all you look for is calm, back account. What is wrong with your Christianity? As soon as he says he walks in shell, you forget to pray. Because once they walk in shell, it's the will of God. Glory to God. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. When we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. Brothers and sisters, say sometimes in your Christian life, some things will happen. You will pray. You will not understand what's going on. And you will be like, oh Jesus, with tears coming down your eyes, I've done everything, but I trust you. I don't have the answers, but I trust you. I will stay here because I'm here not for things. I'm here for you. I've given you my heart and I'm committed to it even in dark season. That's true Bible Christianity. Not the Christian that, that goes on strike. So I, I read somewhere online. Ah. This is coming on. Pastor said that you will sing a new song. Eh, if I don't sing the song, that pastor will see Shiggy. Can, can you imagine? B because all of a sudden, God is lottery. If, if you want church people to give, you know how church people will give. They just come and tell you, oh yeah, if you give $10, $100 in 24 hours, you will give. Someone needs to give you that kind of Baba Jebu lottery vibe for you to be able to give to the one that made you. By your own sense, don't you have some gratitude that everything I have, can't you make up your mind that I will be a giver? And the, the thing is that, and this is what I'm talking about, our, our, our values has been altered by the world. Some, the, the world, the, you know, because we're Christians in the world, and there's this Babylonian system, which is like an antichrist value, that begins to alter our value. We don't even know what is right or wrong. Praise God. I said praise God. When you're not consecrated, what happens to you? You begin to lose spiritual sensitivity. That's what happened. You, your heart begins to die spiritually. Hosea chapter 10 verse 12. Look at that quickly. Hosea chapter 10 verse 12. When you're not consecrated, you begin to lose it spiritually. 
your heart becomes very hardened. Your heart becomes hardened. That's why you used to cry in prayer before. What happened to the tears? You used to be so passionate about midweek service. What happened to you? You used to be so excited about service. What happened to you? Your heart has become dry. Brother, where, 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 is your, where is your tears in prayer? Sister, where is your passion for the Lord? Where is your passion for Christ? You're giving me New King James Version. Give me King James Version. See what it says here. He says, sow to yourself in righteousness and reap in mercy. He says, break up your fallow ground. He says, there are some hearts that are so hard. You know, there are some hearts that no matter what you preach in church. Now, pastor, be that I know they shake. I know they shake. Hey, they like, may they, bring, may they preach heaven and hell. I know they affect me. Oh. Now, we say, I'm going to do I won't do. What kind of heart is that? Your heart is so tough. You don't tremble at God's word. Amen. You talk, 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 talk. Pastor Clean. I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg. I beg. Uh, everything, everyone, 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 good job. Break up your fallow ground. Question, wait, you know, you, you must always be at that place where the word of God can make you tremble. Oh. You must always be at that place. When you hear the word of God, you will, hey, it, it arrests you. You must keep your heart there. Don't become the person that becomes so over familiar with the word of God. Praise God. Your wife is praying. There's a way you disregard the prayer because you're over familiar. You'll be making noise, making noise, making noise, making noise. I didn't look and pray in this house. She might be doing some things in excess, but regard the person she's praying to and have a conversation. You will come to church throughout the service. You're on TikTok, you're on Instagram, you're on this. You, you lack reference for spiritual things. You don't know this is the house of the Lord. There are some things that are not allowed. You come to church, all the, the, your belly is showing, your back is showing. Where? You know, I say, why didn't you come to church? I don't have clothes. Clothes? Is this a fashion parade? Whatever you have, where? He said, no, no, people look at me somehow. When did people become your focus? Where is God in all of this? He said, the time will come when they that must worship God will worship in spirit and in truth. He said, why didn't you come to church? I, I, I couldn't come. I just looked, went to a church near to my house. Eh, eh, why? He said, because I was just tired. Oh, but when you're at work, you can go to, you, you can go, you can go to VI. When you're at work, why not go and work with Mr. Biggs next to your house? <laughs> God is the one that you just go to the store next to your house. Don't offer God, God. So don't offer sacrifice like, like Cain. Sacrifice are useless. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. You must learn to make your heart be after God. Because it says love not the world. I'm going to come to that. You must learn to love God. Let, let, me, let, me, give you, let me give you some examples. First Kings chapter 15 verse 3. First Kings chapter 15 verse 3. When he says, so this sermon is loving the Lord and not loving the world. See what the Bible says. The Bible says, and he walked in all the sins of his father which he had done before him. And his heart was not perfect before the Lord. His God as the heart of David. The point is that you think nobody sees you. God sees into the heart. He knows that all the giving you do in church is that you want to be recognized. He knows. And that's why those giving with all the amount you give, nothing has happened. He knows why you're in church because your wife pressured you to come to church. And God is saying that, am I not big enough for you to come without your wife pressuring you? He knows that all of these things are coming to church and doing like this. He, you say, I've joined Greta, I've joined Osha. He knows all you're looking for is husband. So every Sunday, you, 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 from, from 6 a.m. So you have gotten there first. Human beings are saying, she's so committed. No, what's commitment? When all the brothers that have small, small cars are passing, you don't greet well, though. But the ones that have big, big cars, Rolls Royce, G Wagon, Lexus. Hello, welcome to church. You are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. 
Remember that God sees the heart. Glory to God. When they ask you to follow up, you not follow up. But what is a fine girl? Hello. Um, you were in church today. I noticed you. Um, I'm here to follow you up. On Wednesday, Tuesday, I just had to check on you again. Are you following up for the Lord? Or because you have sexual desires? Did there are desires within your bosom? Some women, the only time they pray for their husband to be spiritual is when their husband starts misbehaving in the family or sexual way. If he's not doing that, they're okay that he's not spiritual. They're okay. Mm, they're okay. He doesn't go to church, they're okay. But once there's another woman, ah, father. Because your prayer was not after his salvation. You are, you are interested in it for yourself. Praise God. I said, Praise God. The Bible says his heart was not perfect. What did he didn't say? He says his heart was not perfect. There was a measurement, it's a scale. There was a measurement. His heart was not perfect as unto the Lord, like the heart of his father David. David had a perfect heart. And it's amazing because David had the perfect heart but imperfect actions. Hey, God, see how God sees. Some people are condemning. They have imperfect actions, but their heart is perfect. And only God can see the difference. Church people, the way they fight in the car park, as if they didn't just come from church. Do you know that some of the meanest and wicked people in the world are Christians? Did you go to university? Lecturers within on their door, this is my year of this. Other lecturers will say, okay, I'll give it to Max to pass the course I can graduate. This one, never. They, they will show you pepper. They will show you pepper. You don't wonder, where is the love of Christ? Sometimes, sometimes when you need help, it's the people in club, it's the people on the street that will help. Born again people. The first thing I would say, uh -huh, what happened to you? Why did you become so careless? We know he was careless. It's time to help. Help. Praise God. Consecration. First Kings chapter 14, verse 8 to 9. First Kings 14, verse 8 to 9. Look at what this one says. First Kings 14, verse 8 to verse 9. It says, Oh wow. And rent the kingdom away from the house of David and gave it to thee. And yet thou hast not been by my servant David, who kept my commandments and followed me with all his heart to do that which was right in my eyes. Verse 9. But thou hast done evil above all that has come before you. See what God said. He says, David's heart. See, that what I'm going to is that I want your heart to be like, Lord, I want to please you. I want your heart to be like, Lord, I want to love you. Lord, you mean a lot to me. It's not about job. It's not about money or children. You are enough. Every other thing is extra. You satisfy me. God, you satisfy me. Because that's where it starts from. Once the heart is not right, the action cannot be right. See what it says, verse 8. He says, David followed the Lord with all of his heart. You see some Christians, you see some Christians, the way they harass the girls in their office. Christians, oh, even with big title in church, yet any skirt that passes, <laughs> Shay, now do your prayer for you. You are doing shakara. You are doing shakara. He says, Aboye, Pastor, leave that in. We are in the office. This is a corporate environment. Is that a corporate environment? Your God does not come to your office, He only comes to your church. Praise God. I said, Praise God. I said, Praise God. So, what does it mean to love the Lord? To love the Lord means you are passionate. I want to teach you to be passionate. When it's time to worship, Lord, I worship you. This is what it means to love the Lord. You are passionate. Don't just, don't just form like this. I'm not just bond though. Be passionate.
passionate. When there's, if you don't know the song, that's why we put the warnings on the screen. We bought the screen for a lot of money so that you can sing the song. Follow the sing and sing the song. Sometimes kneel. Sometimes kneel in reverence. Sometimes kneel in reverence. So I say, well, I'm a very emotional man. Ah, but when my you explain, when my you explain, you get emotional. Your wife will bring food. Hey, don't bring food. Don't come here now. Use that emotion for Jesus. Love him with passion. When it's Sunday morning, don't let them be, don't let them be forcing you to go to church. Before you know, oh, honey, I'm ready. Passion. You're serving the cell. You're going to sell with passion. Let your heart be with the Lord. Uh, when they say giving, the way your face will just drop. They've not even dip their hand in your pocket. They will just say, giving. Why? Why are you angry? No, sincerely, why? Sincerely, I don't understand. Why are you angry? Nobody has forced you to give. They were not touching your pocket. Well, no, my just give. You're, you're already tired. Yet, you come to church. I want to ask you, the diesel they use in this church is free, Abby. We meet the diesel supplier and tell them that, say, we are born again Christians from harvesters. Send us diesel. I, I was checking the diesel bill last year. Last year alone, all our churches spent 150 million on diesel. Yeah? 150 million on diesel. Just as a responsible Christian, don't you know that where I worship, my children belong to a children's church. Those people that handle them, the policemen, the security, all the, we, we pray for them, right? I just said, just the last man, manga, let gross blessed. Praise God. What does, so, so, you know, consecration makes your heart sensitive to God. Romans chapter 14, verse 8. My passion. So when I love the Lord, my passion goes to God. I, I set my passion towards God. I set my passion towards God. I, 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 set, I, I set my desires towards God. A lot of you have goals for the year. Um, um, financial goal. Network goal. I want to ask you, do you have soul winning goal? Do you have prayer goal? That once in a week, I will fast and pray. Those are other goals you should have. Do you have giving goal? That this is what, how much I will give every Sunday. One man I was telling me, he said, Pastor, I made up my mind every Sunday I'll be giving 20,000 naira. I said, wonderful. Romans 14, verse 8. Romans 14, 8. It says, For whether we live, we we'll live unto God. Whether we die, we we'll die unto God. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. He says, we are not ourselves. We, we are not ourselves. We are the Lord's. I can't just live anyhow. I can't just live anyhow. I'm the Lord's. I belong to the, I, like, like that song, I belong to a deity. I, I, have you seen all these witch doctors that are high priests in the village? They don't just go anywhere. There's what they wear, you know, the Amadio, the Amadio are priests. There's what they wear behave. The same thing. You too, you, you are a priest. You belong to a deity. Your deity is El Shaddai. Say, I belong to a deity. I don't live for myself. I, I, I met, I, there was a lady that was telling me that, um, you know, I think they consecrated her to worship or show. He said, when she's a certain age, a prince will take her back to the village and that's where she's going to live and die. In the worship because she's a she's a she's a priestess a demonic priestess you are a priest live like one all <laughs> oh, these years of christianity you can't pray 20 minutes 20 minutes 20 minutes after three minutes all your prayers finished train yourself to pray myself we we are the lord's we're not our own first john chapter 2 verse 15 and this is what consecration is first john chapter 2 verse 15 first john 2 says 15 says love not the it says love not the world it says, that's the problem the problem is that we love the world when it says the world what is the world of course we're in the world but not the physical world it's talking about the perspective the values the thinking the behaviors of the world. It says, love not the world. 
Love not the world. How can you date someone that you know is a fraudster? You see, it doesn't matter. The ends justifies the means. Yeah, 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 yeah. They are blowing you fire from hell. You don't know. Someone that makes other people cry for them to do well. And the reason, and you are a child of God, and the reason why you think that it's okay is because at the end of the day, the person is taking it of you financially. He says, Lord, not the world. Even some pastors now anoint laptops of Yahoo boys. The world has entered their mind. How can you anoint crime? Love not the world. What's love not the world? Don't value pleasure more than purpose. All of a sudden, you're falling in love with your best friend's boyfriend. Are you okay? You say, I can't help it. You say, Pastor, I, I can't help it. How can I help it? Pastor, when I just see him, I'm just wet. You, you see, you are under demonic influence. And now, you go online, you go online, and you're saying these things online, and you say, what is wrong? Is what I want. I don't know what's wrong with it. After all, they have their own problem, and this, and this, and this. What are you liking? Do you know what the Bible calls covetousness? Liking what belongs to somebody else. The reason why is that is this philosophy that it was I feel it, it's okay. Cop your desires. Cop your desires. Cop your desires. Christian men are now breaking up because the girl refused to have sex. What is wrong with you? What did you receive? Eternal life. The girl, you met this nice girl, and I said, um, you know what dating? Wait, wait, is it okay? I can't have sex. Eh? If you can't have sex, I can't date you. I can't date you. You should even tremble that I found a girl like this that valued God's word. She will help me discipline my sexuality. The church is quiet. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. The church is quiet. You will see, you will see, ladies. Sending nudes, single ladies to single, sending nudes. Yeah, I just, I just want to keep your mind busy. I just want to keep your mind busy. I just see the reason why you do that. You want to be like the world. That's what they do there. You want to be like them. You you want to be. You need them to question. How do you even take nude videos? What what when you take the pictures? What goes in your mind? So when the guy comes, the guy now starts, you know, the guy now, the guy now strike, wants to fire. And I say, no, no, we are born again. What is no? Don't start what you cannot finish. <laughs> Love not the world. See, the challenge is that we get all this importation from the world. All this importation from the world. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. It says, If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You know, so I say, um, I say, My name is this, you know, I work in Zenith and I have this business. There are some things you should be proud of. I'm a soul winner, I'm an usher in church. This, you know. The world may not like it, but that's our own heritage. We are different from them. Oh, I'm a cell leader. Oh, yeah, yeah. In, in my church, I do this. I'm a cell leader. Oh, pray to the glory of God. Oh, I, I'll call you at 5 a.m. No, no, that, that's my fasting and prayer day. Ah, you fast and pray? Mm, not really. Oh. You know, you, you want to code. You want to code. You want to code. You want to code that you fast and pray. Because you don't want the world to know that you are there. It says, love not the world. Love not the world. Verse 16. Verse 16. It says, for all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh. And what is wrong with masturbation? 
It's just the idea that you cannot discipline your sexual appetite. And you will ruin it because even when you get married, it's still not disciplined. And that's why a lot of people that have masturbating problems, even when they get married, they keep masturbating because they didn't learn how to tame their appetite. It's not about the masturbation. It's about, it's about your sexual desire should not master you. It should not master you. If you cannot control it when you are single, you can't control it in marriage. It should not master you. Just like food should not master you. At 40, you cannot fast. To 6. You will soon start saying you have different kind of sickness because of fast. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Even all of you that have children, train your children to fast. Train them with good things. Fasting is a good thing. Let them start for 12. Then move them to 3. That's how you train them. He said for all that is in the world is what is a, you know, all that is in the world is a, is a, is a lust of the flesh. What's the lust of the flesh? The desires of the flesh. The desires. The flesh wants to do so much. Wants to do so much. Friday night you must go out. Even if you are broke, you will go. You have, you have an account with the club. To allow you owe. No wonder your finance is getting, is wobbling. So he was then going to the club. It's not about the club. It's what happens in the club. And when you now get there, not even in club, even weddings, you would dance and forget that you even know Christ. You you would you would grind and grind. See, the guy you are grinding is has an obvious erection, and the thing that you even like it. Look at. You pride yourself in it. Oh, this born again kids are like, see what I did. <laughs> you don't know God. Satan is using you small, small. <laughs> and the reason why you feel that way is that all of a sudden, the desires of the world have entered you. I don't know the difference. Love not the world. Let me look at him and say, love not the world. <laughs> It says, what is in the world? The lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh. You like life. You like life. You like to show off. I mean, is there the pride of life? You like to show any small thing posts. Any small thing posts. Any small thing posts. And we know you are smaller than what you look like. like we know you are smaller than what you look like online. People's cars that you don't own, you post with it. They bought you food, you didn't buy the food, you post the food. Because you want to give us the impression that me, big girl, ah, ha, eh, eh, oko, ah, <laughs> ah. You see, guys, borrowing car. Is it pastor? Is the steez? <laughs> Borrowing car. Because in your mind, if I don't amplify, if I don't use what I don't have, I cannot get a yes. If you use falsehood to start a relationship, you will use falsehood to sustain it. Love not the world. What do you bragging? What do you bragging? What do you bragging? Do you brag in things like, oh, I just had one hour of prayer. Thank you, Jesus. It is not going to hurt you that I can brag in that. I, I did a 21 days fast. Thank you, Jesus. Or all your brag are things of the flesh. One time I spoke to a lady, he said, Pastor, my DM is full of guys, just guys everywhere, guys. I said, wow. Guys, not angels, 
guys. Love not the world. Turn your affect, and, and the reason why that comes at the influence of the world has come. Turn your attention to God. So I'm saying, you know, I'm, I'm a very rich man. Let me tell you something. I have very few respect for rich people. You know why? Before God, the one that is rich is not the one that has a billion in the account. It's the one that has given a billion. Did you hear what he said? It's not the one that has a billion. It's the one that has given it. Because the life of a man does not consist in the abundance of that which he has. What is the use of your money when you have not helped your neighbors? What's the use of your money when you have not helped the family member? One project in church you have not sponsored. You know, say, you have this billion. What's your billion? It's for you. Eat it. Suck it. Drink it. People around you cannot pay school fees. Gate men. You, I, I mean, you go and eat. Some of very painful. You go and eat. You spend. They say the change is twenty nine. You wait for twenty nine change. What will it cost you to be like? You know what? You can have it. What's twenty nine change? The woman selling plantain. You will price and price and price and price and price. All what she's selling is just twenty thousand, and she will steal it for money tonight. And you will price that plantain. Don't you know that you're giving us a blessing? Where is your heart of compassion? Praise God. Love not the world. What do you love? Learn to love prayer. If you've missed NLP, tomorrow resume. Learn to love Bible study. Learn to love church. Love the things of God. Set your affection there. Let's pray. Stand on your feet. Let's pray. We are going to start with repentance. Anywhere you need to repent, Lord, I'm here. There are things I need to lay on the altar. It's here on the altar. Things to lay on the altar, I want to lay it on the altar. Everybody stand on your feet. Yeah, let's go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. And make decisions. Today, make decisions. Today, do what? Make decisions. And Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you. All of us are here. And this is a message for the crowd. This is a message for me, for everyone here. There are places where we have clearly compromised, where we have stepped out of the bounds. And we're coming back today to the altar and dropping things and stripping things. And coming back to our first love. And I'm asking that you will help everybody to make adjustment. So that our hearts will be in tune. That we can be all that you want us to be. We give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you. You can have your seats.